Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome back to another episode of Every Effect in Adobe Premiere Pro Explained. Today we're taking a look at the Immersive Video Effects folder. This is a relatively newer addition and allows us to adjust VR 360 or 180 footage. If you're unfamiliar with 360 footage, this is kind of what it looks like. You see we have a camera rigged on the bottom here and it shoots in many different camera angles and directions and stitches them all together into one large frame where you can see a full view. I've actually done a short playlist on my channel all about 360 video if you wanna see how I captured this footage. But the cool part about these effects is although they're built to be applied on this type of footage, you can also totally use them on regular footage and it still mostly works. I'm actually gonna start off with this third one here, VR color gradients, just to demonstrate what's going on. So when I apply the color gradients, you see how it's applying it onto all these different boxes and you can see it kind of aligns with the stitch points of the video because it's meant for 360. Nothing's stopping me from applying these effects onto a shot like this, just a standard straight shot, but you can see how these squares match up to the 360 footage along with many of these. So while we're here, this first one is VR color gradients. It just allows us to add color gradients so you can change the amount of points, you can increase the gradient power, and you can increase the blend of all the colors. Here I've had the opacity down at 28%, but you can increase its strength or decrease it, or you can blend it with blending modes like we've been doing. So multiply, something like that. You can also adjust the position of any point, so you can move them around in whatever way you want. Compared to the gradient tool available in the generate folder, which is four color gradient, this could be nice even on standard footage because four color gradient only allows you to do four colors, whereas this allows you to do eight. And you could choose whatever color you want by dropping down the points and adjusting each point. Next up, we have VR blur, just a pretty standard blur, but it takes into consideration the VR properties. If you ever uncheck the auto VR properties, It'll allow you to choose manually what kind of frame you have. So stereoscopic or monoscopic. These are just different types of 3D image properties depending on how the video is ultimately eventually gonna be displayed. This next one's really cool actually. There, there's not a, an exact way to replicate this easily and that's VR chromatic aberrations. So if you remember the channel blur tool we did, that kind of is similar, but this actually creates distortions in the different color channels to create these chromatic aberrations, this red bluish color effect. You can adjust the center point of interest, the amount of aberration on each color channel, and the fall off distance. So how far or limited to the point of interest it is. You can also invert it so that it grows away from the point of interest, kind of creating aberrations around the edges. So this is one that I wouldn't hesitate to use even on just standard footage. It can create those cool aberrations that normally might take you multiple effects, layers, or blending modes. Going along with that is VR Digital Glitch. It's another one kind of like the Chromatic Aberrations using some channel splitting, but it also adds this unique distortion effect that you can adjust the strength of under this amplitude section, creating this really cool glitch effect with some Chromatic Aberration included. If you open up the distortion panel, you can change the amount of color distortions in there and the amount of just blockiness distortions. And again, not only can I apply that on 360 VR type of footage, it works just fine on this kind of footage. One thing to mention before we continue, when you're working with these VR effects and combining them with some other distortion effects, sometimes you might get an error that two cannot be used together just due to some processing. It helps if you just use the VR effect first or try to nest the clip before you combine certain effects. Next up, we have VR Denoise. This is great for perhaps if you're shooting in a little bit lower light. It'll try to denoise your footage. You'll see if, if you don't have much noise in it to begin with, you'll just kind of get a bit of a blurring amount. So this is one that you might use sparingly if you shot at nighttime and there's a lot of noise in your footage. It can try to reduce that. Next up, we have VR Fractal Noise. This is actually another generation type of effect, like the color gradients. This applies a fractal noise, kind of like the clouds or fractal noise effects in After Effects. You can adjust the type of fractal noise, so turbulent, basic, max, to create all these different cool waves. You can adjust the animation of this by keyframing the evolution. So you could see it's like liquidy, almost like water if I added some color onto it. 
And each of these other sections allows us to adjust something about the property. So complexity, more or less simple, and transforming the scale in or out. That's really cool. It almost looks like some water or something. And you can blend them in with your clip. So if I was to put this on overlay, you'll see that it blends in this with the bottom clip, which depending on what you're trying to do, can be kind of cool. Add some lighting or creative effects. So that's VR Fractal Noise. Again, you can add color tints, mix it up with some of the other ones. Next up, we have VR Glow. This is really cool. It's, it's another one that you can't really find in the other effects panels. And this is just adds a glow, kind of like almost like an alpha glow, but it just allows us to glow certain parts of the image based on certain thresholds of brightness. You can adjust the radius, the softness, the saturation of the glow, and you can adjust the color of the tint. So if I want to do like a red type of glow, I can use that tint color. So this is useful to add a glowy property to your clip. And you can also keyframe it where something is glowing, like brighter or softer, or it's getting brighter or hotter. Next up, we have a couple that are meant to distort or shape the image in, in whatever way you want. So we have VR plane to sphere. This will turn it from a plane to a more spherical type of object. So if you're playing around with the kind of fisheye look, you could warp it in this way. The next one like that is VR projection. This allows us to project our VR image back onto a more flat type of standard size. So this one's really cool. You, you can see I can do all kind of weird 360 panning because we have a seamlessly stitched together video that allows us to do this. This is the first one where we're truly seeing what happens. This is one where the, these kind where you're distorting don't really work on flat footages because the flat footages are not seamless, as you can see. But although, you know, you could still get creative with it. Next up, we have Rotate Sphere. This one allows us to, again, tilt and rotate that seamless footage, almost like we were changing directions in camera. And this is the beauty of VR. This is when you're watching VR on a player like YouTube and you can drag around. It's kind of like doing that manually if you wanted to keyframe a direction change. And lastly, just kind of going along with the denoise, we have VR Sharpen. Just allows us to try to sharpen our image a little bit if need be. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the keying effects, some of the most powerful and useful tools in Premiere. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for new videos. I'm doing a playlist going over all of these video effects in Premiere Pro. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.